All right, take it away. All right, so I don't know if you guys saw this talk at DEF CON, but Orange Sai, he's done a number of different like um, zero day write-ups, um, most of them like VPN apps, uh, but he did one for Microsoft Exchange and it's called Proxy Logon. And he's like, it's just the tip of the iceberg. And like, kind of like the end of the video, he's like, you know, uh, Microsoft's kind of like abandoning on-prem solutions for Exchange, but there's still a ton of exchanges out there and it's used in a lot of different environments. And so he wrote this really nice blog after he posted that video, kind of like explaining different types of proxy star attacks, so like proxy logon, proxy oracle, proxy shell. Um, basically, um, he proxy shell, he got $200,000 on for winning pod to own. And then um, proxy logon was one of the first ones he found. And so um, recently, Metasploit was nice enough to document a lot of it. And pretty much any version of Exchange that came out before um, like July or something um, was vulnerable. And so if you take a look at the Metasploit exploit for it, um, there's a pretty good list of uh, sources of what to read. You know, his Black Hat presentation, um, you know, the Pondone blog. I don't like Medium, so I usually don't click on those. But there's this one here, this why for why dot space like this guy like obviously it's not in english but he wrote most of the english and like it's actually pretty well written and he talks about how he recreated um orange stuff and made a poc for it um so if you got time definitely read that and um, i decided why don't we build a test environment and just like show this what it looks like and so you can find uh, the exchange update which is actually the installer and it works on a trial basis and you can find a copy of windows server 2016 um, ISO straight off Microsoft's website, which also works on a trial basis. And so I built an environment using that stuff. Um, so here is uh, server 2016, just to show it's running. And then we have Exchange installed locally on this. Um, yep, we're still logged in. Cool. All right. So on the Cali side, if we wanted to exploit this vulnerability, um, oh, one thing to keep in mind over here on the Windows side. Um, Defender is turned off. Um, that's not a base config, but it's not too uncommon to have Windows Defender turned off. And that's so Metasploit stuff can work. So um, MSF console, let's hop on in. And Microsoft console takes forever to load. Or sorry, not Microsoft, Metasploit console takes forever to load. So uh, if we do a search and just search for like proxy logon, um, we'll find proxy logon RCE right here. And so do this and say use, paste isn't working. So let's try to paste here. There we go. All right, so show options. Um, let's go full screen on this so you guys can see that a little better. Clear uh, show options. All right, so the required fields are what we need. So the proxy logon attack, you need to know an email address for this organization. So it's not too uncommon to like know an email address for an organization. So I'm just going to provide one, but um, that is unique to this attack is you have to know an email address. Um, the email server I have set up is test.com. Um, and then the other yes is you want to say it, it's a post, which is fine. Our host, so we have to set our target. Um, it's either test.com or I'm going to use the IP address 1004. This window a little so bigger. quick question uh, did on your collie box did you set its um dns to point to your uh, uh uh dc so i have a web environment and so when you ping test.com it goes to uh the exchange controller oh, okay gotcha yep yeah i probably should explain the web environment a little better there but yeah um so go back here so this box is sitting on 1005 so if you Go here, IPA, you can see we're sitting on 1005 slash 24. And then uh, the exchange server is on 1004. And then just to make this easy to reach, clear, show options. So we have set the email address, we've set the proxy. Oh, we didn't set proxy, but we don't need to, it's set to no. Um, the use of the proxy variable is kind of cool. So if you wanted to forward all the requests out of Metasploit into Burp, you can. And so the way you do that is you like set proxies HTTP colon 127.001 colon the port you want, what proxy port you want to use. So that's kind of a cool thing to do. Um, if we have time, I might show that. And then, yeah, we're just going to use a standard interpreter shell as a phone home and just clear. Exploit. 
and do to do to do um this one it's looking up stuff so it's looking up the organization name and its group and then it's looking at all stuff and we have a shell so the way this works is there's an ssrf vulnerability in the way the proxy implementation is implemented on exchange server and so you can make special requests to the proxy dll that'll then go and make local requests to the slash powershell agent um it's kind of cool um and uh, it's something they probably should have checked and the way orange side brings it up is like hey like no one's really done a good security audit of exchange and like there's so many people just using exchange everywhere and so um we can do sysinfo here and we can see it's running windows 2016 adx on the test domain um and he played with this a bit and then he uh, found another vulnerability and it's called proxy shell so we're going to search for proxy shell and we're going to use that Um, I guess I do want to use it. All right, show options. So let's clear so you guys can see that. Show options. So now we're using proxy shell. And you'll notice on proxy shell, we don't need to provide an email address. So there's some logic built into Metasploit to like query the server for all the emails and then use one of the emails that has admin privileges. So we just need to set the R host variable, set the L host variable. Then just type exploit. I did some scrolling there for my mouse, so that's why all of you showed up. And so um, this one, you'll see it's calling like this mailbox import export role. So but it dumps the mailbox and it saves it locally to this, and then it tells it to run a command by uploading a file to um, OWA auth and ZLI, so simple like shell, and just calling that. And then it deletes the export request and deletes the email we made. So, kind of cool, but it's uh, just a different way of doing this. And like, it's kind of crazy that like Microsoft's like official opinion on this is like, hey guys, yeah, we're going to update this, but like, don't expect us to update these, update these things in the future. And you guys should start using Azure. And it's like, why is that the solution for something that's been widely used? And widely accessible by a lot of people and you know a lot of these companies can't update this stuff or they're not going to and you're just going to leave a bunch of vulnerable boxes out there um and so yeah it, and it's kind of crazy like these are like very simple like metasploit commands like this is like very script kitty friendly for all this stuff so nice that's my quick little demo on that yeah, very, very nice. I'm a huge uh, fan of Oren Sai. He creates so, uh, so, so, so many good contents on that kind of topic area, on VPNs and on, on a lot of uh, web applications. And I think, yeah, that's interesting because I think it's, according to your explanation, it sounds, uh, the vulnerability sounds like a logic type of bug. And with those kind of bugs, it, you can, it's very easy to script versus more of the, the memory management type of bugs. Yeah, yeah, it's no like exploitation kind of stuff. Like you're not doing like a ROP thing. Like you're literally just this account has permission through an SSRF to do mm -hmm. this. And, yeah. awesome. Crazy too, because like this has been around for years. Like this mm -hmm. has been around since the start, and like mm -hmm. yeah, this just insane. So uh, one one thing I want to jump in there with your your comment about how that has been around, and so that's kind of a, a reality that. I think uh, people that are uh, very informed about vulnerabilities, we understand that they're just littered all over our, our product. It's just, mm -hmm. someone hasn't looked for it yet. It's, it's there. And I feel like the, the, the lay people who don't have that experience, they assume, oh, uh, there's no alerts for it. There's no CVs for it. There's no uh, patch for it. It's not known. So therefore my, my system must be secure, but that's, that's not the reality of how the technology actually works. So yeah, I, I just wanted to share that. Yeah, with like closed source applications, like you have like no one looking at this kind of stuff. Like there's mm -hmm. like, trust us, we made it secure. Mm -hmm. Definitely made everything secure in the past, right guys? Like... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send you a video link about a guy who kind of rants about it in terms of 
yeah, it's it's just there. So no, his point was that I think he was talking about the most recent uh, uh, Apple iOS vulnerabilities, and then he was all saying like, okay, uh, Apple uh, no click vulnerabilities, and um, you know he was like, okay, Apple now says your patch, you're good, but it's like for the attackers, that's just one of like a, another dozens or so, right? It's just it's those things are still there. It's just either no one has shared it or no one has looked for it yet, you know. So yeah, I, I yeah, very much in agreement with his opinion. Oh, you're muted, you're muted. Uh, Jesse, you're muted. <laughs> and to add on to that, thank you for catching that mute. Uh, to add on to that, like there's that whole registry full of stuff, right? Like the NSA eternal blue exploit needing SMB version one. They're like, yeah, we patched that, ba basically made it turned off on everything, but an attacker just goes into the registry and turns it on. And then now it's, it's, it's ready to go again. Uh, yeah, to, to close, I'll, I'll add some um, information about Cyberforce. So for the Cyberforce, we, if we were going to do a, a challenge, it'll, it'll be something like what Jesse is saying in terms of there could be an interaction with the registry or a config file, right? And then so therefore, for you as a student, you might have to figure out, okay, how do you configure the registry or some config file to either mitigate it, disable it, or uh, change it in a way so that the risk is less. And the way the way that Kuntz was showing the vulnerability, uh, that exploit dropped certain artifacts in certain places. So for the competition, we might ask the students like, hey, find where it dropped these, the reverse shells and all these different artifacts. So yeah, with that, I'll close this.